Okay, let's go to hepatic encephalopathy. I'll go fast and I'll finish it, okay? So hepatic encephalopathy is a potentially reversible neurologic condition. What happens? I will explain about multiple mechanisms over here. So we have a lot of toxins, some amino acid imbalance, some neurotransmitter imbalance. All of them are working in your brain. It is suppressing your brain. Which means technically, if you try to treat the patient on time, you can revert it. That's why it is called potentially reversible neuropsychiatric syndrome. So let's go into definition. So one by one. So one is, it is a neuropsychiatric syndrome because it's not just neurological. There's going to be psychiatric presentation too. I will expect this. Another one thing, this is potentially reversible, which means if you treat on time, it can be reverted. Another one thing. And the manifestation can be ranging from mild too severe which means there can be little altered mental status so in case of mild hepatic encephalopathy usually you don't find anything we are going to talk about the classification and staging in zero stage you don't find anything in first stage little bit change but if you have the last stage you can get even coma so this should be included why do you get this because you have severe liver disease so we are going to expect four things in the definition one is neuropsychiatric phenomenon or syndrome potentially reversible and the presentation can be mild to severe what is mild slightly altered mental function to coma the last thing it is due to severe liver disease so the problem can be either the liver disease which is killing the liver cells so you don't have the reserve to do all the function, one option, or you still have the reserve to do the function, but the blood is bypassing. So two main factors or etiology, one is fulminant hepatitis, I explained to you in pathology, yes. In fulminant hepatitis, inflammation will be minimal because most of the liver cells are dead. So you don't have reserve now to do the functions. So in this case, ammonia is not detoxified, yes. <coughs> hormones are not detoxified all the things I explained is possible another one thing is you have cells because you have still what regenerative nodules what is there in the regenerative nodules hepatocyte but the compounds don't come into contact with these cells why the blood is diverting this is called shunting this is porto systemic shunting so both are possible Clear, yes? <coughs> okay, let's go into classification. By World Congress of Gastroenterology in Vienna in 1998, they divided hepatic encephalopathy into three types, A, B, and C. A is called acute, which means this is about acute liver failure in case of fulminant hepatitis. Paracetamol, high doses can kill the liver, can cause acute fulminant hepatitis. More than 50 tablets, if you take, you will die. Try for 10 or 20, you can get this hepatic encephalopathy. If you, if you want to try, tell me, like I can fix the camera. <coughs> the next one is called bypass. In bypass, technically saying, you don't need to have liver disease. Sometimes you do surgery for this. For some other reason, you are doing surgery where you are connecting the portal, going to systemic. So in this case, you can get bypass. We are not talking about cirrhosis in this case. C is combined or cirrhosis. There is regenerative nodules, but still it is not good enough as the real normal liver, which means that the amount of cells will decrease technically. So which means you have a kind of liver failure, but not so fulminant, but still the reserve is decreasing. Yes, because half of the liver is dead. Still you have some regeneration, Let's say if you had 100 cells, now you have 80 cells. So you have more or less what? Occult liver failure. But the main issue in case of liver cirrhosis, because of this regenerative nodules and fibrosis, the portal vein, yes, tributaries are getting blocked over here. Or like the branches are getting blocked. So they are not draining. So what will happen in this case, that will also have what? Diversion. They will also have bypass. But this is because of cirrhosis. Here we are not talking about cirrhosis. So there are uh, three types.
I'm not going to clinically how this is divided into three. At least remember, A is acute, B is bypass, which means you don't have intrinsic liver disease, probably the surgery. Here, cirrhosis, which means little bit of this and bypass too. Okay, pathogenesis. We can go faster. Probably you studied this. Now, what is the pathogenesis? Talking about this part, if you remember about function of physiology, yes, there are many functions. So ammonia is produced in your body, but ammonia is toxic for mammalian cell. So we have to detoxify this and we produce a compound which is relatively less toxic. This is urea. So ammonia will be taken by the liver. It is sent into this urea cycle and urea will be produced. Urea is technically less toxic. They don't cause damage, but in very high dose it can cause damage. Usually they don't. If you have liver failure, which means you don't have enough reserve of the cell producing urea, which means now you are going to leave this ammonia in the systemic circulation. Or oh, ammonia is coming, bypassing the liver, getting into the system. So systemic circulation will have high amount of ammonia. Now ammonia is going to go to your brain. So most vulnerable cells in your body is neurons. So if they manage to get into your brain, they can cause damage to neuron as well as the glia. Now you have problem. This is called ammonia hypothesis. We will explain how they are working, what do they do, how do they damage your brain. Next one you can see over here, false neurotransmitters. Normally if you remember uh, about sleep-wake cycle or arousal, I explained to you in anatomy, we have brainstem, brainstem will be containing a group of cells, they are called reticular formation. They are highly branching cells, mainly located in the brainstem. And a special function of these reticular formation will be what? They project multiple projections into your cortex. This is called reticular activating system. They spray norepinephrine and dopamine to keep you awake. If you remember this, reticular activating system. What are the most important neurotransmitter for keeping you awake? Norepinephrine and dopamine. And if you remember the synthesis of norepinephrine and dopamine, they are called what according to biochemistry the structure is called catecholamine because it has a benzene group and there are two hydroxyl. Now if you have some neurotransmitter which will be looking like this, dopamine or which will be looking like this, norepinephrine, but they don't do the same function. So they are structurally same or similar but they don't have the same affinity potency or functional capacity as dopamine and norepinephrine they will work on the receptor but they won't activate them so normally you need to activate your cortex through the reticular activating system what are the what are the very important neurotransmitters norepinephrine and dopamine now you are producing force neurotransmitter structurally similar to these two they will work on the receptors, but they can't activate as good as the real neurotransmitters. So, default is activation. You are bringing false neurotransmitters. What will happen? They are not being activated. So, you are becoming more sober, more lethargic. And in severe cases, you can have coma. Next one. Amino acid imbalance. Now, talking about amino acid imbalance, usually branch, chain, Amino acids are much more higher in your plasma compared to aromatic one. This is about 3 to 3.5 times more. Branch ones are more, aromatic ones are lower. In case of liver failure, now what is going to happen? There are multiple mechanisms. Branch chains are going to decrease. Why? Because muscle will use it. Insulin is, is not there because liver is dying. Insulin is so high. Insulin work on the muscle to suck up this branch chain. Branch chain will be used. So what is increasing comparatively? Aromatic ones are increasing. Aromatic ones are the precursors of false neurotransmitters. So the mechanism at last, if you see, the eventual mechanism is going to be false neurotransmitters. But why? Because branch chain amino acid decreased. And aromatic ones are increasing. They are the precursors of false one. So technically they increase. So more or less this is modified of this. Next one you can see GABA. 
how do you call it gamma amino butyric acid this is the predominant inhibitory neurotransmitter in your brain 40-45 percentage of the neurons are GABAergic, which means inhibitory. How do they work? If you remember from pharmacology, GABA. We have chlorine channel. This is ligand-gated chlorine channel. We have a receptor called benzodiazepine receptor, and they have a co-activator called GABA receptor. You use benzodiazepine on the receptor chlorine channel opens or GABA same story so chlorine channel opens chlorine gets into the cell which will cause hyperpolarization which means depression of the nerve activity more GABA more inhibition now what is happening in this case now your GIT is one of the very important sources of GABA formation because now you have a lot of bad bacteria they are producing too much of GABA GABA is getting into your portal system, but they are not getting destroyed because your liver is not functional. They bypass getting into the systemic. They are going into your brain now, and they are going to suppress the activity of brain. So this is the next one. And the last one, synergistic action of toxin. There are multiple toxins and compounds. I already told you, there are too many compounds we don't know. A lot of things that are coming from your GID, we don't even know. But liver is destroying all of them. Some of them I'll explain. They are going to get into your circulation. They will go to your brain. They will cause damage now. None of these mechanisms proved its efficiency by its own. Which means, sometimes you have hepatic encephalopathy, but ammonia is low. Do you understand? Sometimes you are finding what? Hepatic, insufficient, uh, hep hepatic encephalopathy, but there are no false neurotransmitters, which means probably they are working together, hand to hand. Nothing is proof to operate hepatic encephalopathy by one phenomenon. So it means more or less we should think they are mixed. Is it clear?